Do we respect science in the way that we communicate about her? Imagine your last trip to a science museum or a natural history museum. What do you remember? How would you say science and the scientific practice are depicted there? I'm a trained researcher, and when I go to a science museum, I see results. I don't see the long path towards or all the uncertainty that goes along. I see success. I don't see the 100 dead ends and the failure that leads to doubt. I see fun. I don't see the swearing or the chaos. I see timelines, as if science is this one direction evolution towards prosperity. And I miss certain disciplines. What about humanities? In short, I don't see reality. I don't see science the way I know her. And I understand why the underlying motivation, why we show science as a quick and easy route towards knowledge. See, science is under constant threat. It's a complex and contraintuitive thinking path. It's not the natural thinking path our brain would choose. And it's exactly because it is so complex that it's so easy to attack. Look at the current COVID crisis we're in. There's this new virus that brings tons of questions every day. And yet, because the answer to questions like whether or not to wear face masks, where to wear face masks, isn't immediately straightforward, science is mistrusted. And so we feel the need to protect science. But I'm not sure that we promote her by representing her as quick and easy. I'm not certain that we bring science justice or our audiences by making those choices. I want to present to you today an experiment. The Ghent University Museum, or GAM in short, experiment on how I feel scientific thinking can be translated into the museum context and museum experience. Imagine you enter a science museum and the first thing that you encounter is not the globe of our planet or a skeleton, but the word chaos. See, all search for understanding commences in chaos after all, doesn't it? But the second word you encounter is not solution or order, but doubt. Because doubt is a motor of science. Scientists don't and shouldn't ever claim to have found truth. That is the underlying and anti-dogmatic foundation of scientific thinking. As a scientist, you accept that questions lead to more questions. As a scientist, you accept that what you thought was fixed as knowledge might be overthrown the next day. As a scientist, you seek for knowing, but you accept the not knowing. And that is exactly the attitude that we, as science communicators and science museums, should inject into society. That's how we sharpen critical citizenship. In GOM, we present science as a man-made and thus vulnerable construction of thinking. It is the most reliable tool we have so far to gain objective knowledge, absolutely. But it's man-made and thus it is subject to conflict, abuse, failure. And you know what? Maybe by presenting science not as a sole root of the genius towards victory, but science as it is, by humans, for humanity. But with its highs and its lows, maybe that brings science closer to your audience. It makes it more approachable and tangible. And that's exactly what we want in a museum. Bring your subject to the audience. We focus on the journey of the scientist. Not on the result, but on the process. Take, for example, the microscope of Van Leeuwenhoek, 17th century Dutchman. He invents the microscope. Imagine you're the first person to glance 
into the microscopic world. You would feel wonder, fascination, right? But maybe also frustration, not knowing what you're looking at, doubt. You would feel excitement because you've got this new tool. Remember as a kid, your first magnifying glass, and you would go and collect whatever you could find to study with your new tool. That's exactly what Valéwenouk did. He collected whatever he could find, including sperm. Imagine you're the first person to see these tadpole wiggling beings under your microscope. How would you interpret them? Valéwenouk's contemporaries interpreted them as little persons, little humans, folded up inside the heads of the tadpoles. They were wrong, yes. But within the context of their time and the information that they had, that was a valid hypothesis. And things haven't changed. We still observe, look at new things, new viruses, and we interpret them. But we accept that we might be wrong. We accept the uncertainty. In GUM, we venture alongside the visitor to take a look at science, observe science, and then interpret it. We search together with the visitor to try and define what it is exactly, science. We do not proclaim what it is, but we try to find and explore what it is. We evoke questions and give little answers. In order to take this bird's eye view, to take a step back and observe science, we display the objects interdisciplinary. We juxtapose them. After all, what connects these objects, what the stories that unite them, are the fact that they were used by scientists in a scientific method to gain understanding, to gain knowledge. That's what unites them, not necessarily the knowledge they helped creating. Whether those scientists were anthropologists, zoologists, archaeologists, botanists, or social or linguistic sciences, that doesn't matter. We focus on the narrative that connects them, the scientific method. Juxtaposing these objects, placing objects next to one another that at first glance do not immediately belong with one another, has an extra effect of surprise in the visitor. And this surprise creates time. Time that is necessary to come to reflection and to in-depth um, experience. Time that a visitor would normally not allocate to bite-sized information. But it is necessary to come to that reflection. Meeting the unexpected, the surprise, and the time it brings can also be achieved by taking those scientific objects out of their context, out of the museum, out of the university. Why not, for example, display a whale skeleton in a cathedral? It creates different layers of viewing, different perspectives of looking at something. As a curator, I find displaying artistic perspectives next to the scientific ones especially appealing. It is the ultimate juxtaposition, art and science, or is it? In any case, artists are by, are by far best trained to evoke questioning in the viewer. And in a museum that wants to evoke critical thinking, that can only be of added value. This multi-perspectivism, offering these different perspectives of looking to the viewer, is also including, it invites the visitor in, instead of approaching him or her as the outsider that needs to be filled with information, the empty vessel that is longing for knowledge. And thus begins the experiment. The experiment on how to translate scientific thinking into a museum context and a museum experience. The context of the open house where people are joined in dialogue about their experience. And in GAM, the science experience is not the experience of the sole root of the genius towards victory. It's a much more intriguing path with highs and lows, with victory and failure. 
Within that path lies beauty. I want to call upon all science creators to try and display the beauty in science. Not only in the wonderful and beautiful knowledge they helped creating, but also the beauty materialized within the object. Don't ever ignore the poetry. It creates a bond with your audience. Thank you. Thank you.